Let's have an overview of this section first. Steps to solve CR question. Timing. Prepare for the traps, not just the question type. Summary. Now let us get back to the test GMAT. What exactly GMAT tests in CR? It tests your ability to analyze the arguments and make logic out of it based on the question. All these things are done to test your eligibility to fit in a business school. Steps to solve CR question. Let's try to figure out certain steps to solve a CR question. Read, conclude, pause, eliminate. Four simple steps let's understand in detail. Step 1. Read. The whole point of reading the question for the first time is to understand the meaning the author is trying to convey. We should not bother understanding the question type while reading the question. It is a common notion that if you read the question stem before reading the stimulus, you can solve the question with a better understanding. But we believe people become biased if they read the question stem first. It seems logical that if you know a weakened question is a weakened question before reading the stimulus, but it is not that obvious. Sometimes you will have to weaken a fairly strong argument which looks quite logical. Sometimes you will have to strengthen a very weak argument. So we need to judge the argument on its face value, not under the type of question it has been asked. So. The step one is to understand the argument presented by the author and also take into consideration multiple opinions if there are more than one perspective presented. Steps two, conclude. This is the most important step of any CR question. The whole point of GMAT presenting you a critical reasoning argument is to test whether you understand the conclusion of the argument. And believe it or not, if you don't understand the conclusion, it is almost impossible to solve any type of CR question. The conclusion is usually presented in the argument. There are some markers such as therefore, thus, etc. to detect the conclusion. But we would recommend to identify the conclusion logically rather than from some markers. Because if you understand the logical structure of the argument, you don't need to look for those markers to identify the conclusion of the argument. Thus, we are not advising to remember any of those markers. One hidden step between step 2 and 3 is to make a diagram. We recommend you to make a raw diagram to the CR question to the best of your abilities so that you don't need to look at the question again and again. Let's go to step 3 now. Pause. This pause should happen once you understand the conclusion and read the question stem and before you read the answer options. The pause should not exceed more than 10 to 15 seconds and its whole purpose is to have your answer in mind before looking into the answer options. Step 4. Eliminate. The final stage is elimination. Rather than looking for the right answer options, start eliminating the wrong ones. You will be left with the right one. This step not just applies to the CR question. It applies to all of GMAT. Almost all the question type, especially in verbal, requires elimination. Let's solve the next question. Please pause the video for two minutes and play when you're ready. Let's follow our process. Read, conclude, pause, eliminate. Step 1. Read. Premise 1. Kobo began selling new model X20 in June. Premise 2. X20 sell was 80,000 in three months. That's June, July and August. Conclusion. Kobo will not meet its target of 500,000 in 12 months. Step 2. Conclude. We already understood the conclusion in Step 1. 
Step 3. Pause. It's an evaluation question and we need to understand the aspect that might affect the conclusion. That aspect will be our answer. So we need to search for an answer option that would help us judge whether the target of 500,000 would be achieved or not. If the choice does not affect our judgment, then it is not the right answer. Step 4. Eliminate. In gist of GMAT, let's always eliminate from option E. That would help us not to get trapped from some of the tricks played by the GMAT. Option E. Doesn't matter if Kobo will suffer serious financial losses. Irrelevant to the conclusion. We can eliminate this one. D. Introduced any model last year. Still irrelevant to the conclusion. We can eliminate this one as well. C. Whether X20 is expensive than other models of Kobo. The conclusion doesn't talk about the price. So irrelevant again, eliminate this one too. B. Whether Kobo produces more cars than any other manufacturer? The conclusion is not talking about the achieving the target. Still relevant. Can eliminate this one too. A. We are not supposed to read this answer option if we have confidently eliminated all the four answers options. So, the answer is A. Wow! This was fairly easy question. So eliminating four options were easy. In tough questions, we might be stuck in final two answer options. Let's solve the next question. Please pause the video for two minutes and play when you're ready. Let us follow our process. Step 1. Read. The question only states some facts or premises. There are three categories of rainfall, heavy, moderate, light. Less than one inch, light. One or two inches, moderate. More than two inches, heavy rainfall. So that's given. The second thing given is, light rainfall days were less in 1890 than in 1810. Moderate rainfall days were also less in 1890 than in 1810. But the total rainfall days were more in 1890 than in 1810. We can give some random numbers for our understanding of more or less. Let's say moderate rainfall days was x in 1890 and 2x in 1810. Light rainfall days was y in 1890 and 3y in 1810. We just wanted to show which is higher and which one is lower. Not necessarily does it mean that the moderate rainfall days in 1810 was twice that of 1890. Step 2. Conclude. There is no conclusion stated in the argument. All are simple facts. In fact, this is an inference but must be true question in which we have to find the answer choice which will be true based on the statements mentioned. Step 3. Pause. We are supposed to look for answer choices that will mathematically agree with the given statements. Step 4. Eliminate. The question asks us to find out which answer option is possible to be true. That means the answer option might not be always true, but at least true at some time and instances as usual, let us start with option E. E. Average amount of rainfall is lower in 1890 than in 1810. The average equals to total rainfall upon total number of days. Since the number of days are constants, the year in which we have more total rainfall will have more average rainfall. Since, as per the question, total rainfall is more in 1890, Average rainfall will also be more in 1890. Thus, the answer E is incorrect and is eliminated. D. The total number of inches of rain that fell on days with moderate rainfall in 1890 was more than twice 
which had been in 1810. Already, the total rainfall days are more in 1810 than in 1890, and the moderate rainfall are between one to two inches. There is no way that total rainfall inches in 1890 will be more than twice that of 1810. So, D is eliminated. C. The number of days with some rainfall but no more than two inches will be more in 1890 than in 1810. The rainfall days with less than two inches rain are days with moderate and light rainfall. The light rainfall days are also more in 1810, so in the case of moderate rainfall. So combined, it is not possible to have more such days in 1890. So wrong, and this is eliminated. B, the same equations as option C, but it has been mentioned that such days are same in 1890 and 1810. Again, impossible. Such days are already more in 1810. Eliminated. A. Left with option A. Let's evaluate it as well. Even though we know that it is the correct answer option, the number of heavy rainfall days was lower for 1890 than in 1810. Total rainfall more in 1890. Moderate rainfall days more in 1810. Light rainfall days more in 1810. So logically, heavy rainfall days should be less in 1810, not for 1890. What do you say? And as per this logic, option A is also incorrect. No, not exactly. The heavy rainfall inches are anything more than two. So, if it is 60 inches of rainfall, that is also heavy rainfall. If it is three inches of rain, that is also heavy rainfall. So, sixty inches of rainfall in one day is still more than three inches of rainfall for fifteen days. In this case, we have less number of days of heavy rainfall, but still that one day might beat those fifteen days. Thus, the answer option A can be true in some cases, and hence the correct answer option. Let's move to the next module. Timing. Timing is very important on the GMAT, especially on the verbal section. Since the RC section of the verbal is the time breaker as well as the score breaker, it is really important to keep the average time at par with the critical reasoning section. A critical reasoning question should take on an average two minutes. Some easy questions might be done within a minute. While the most difficult questions can drag the time to a maximum of three minutes per question, but do remember the fact that giving more than three minutes to any CR question on the GMAT is not worth it. Thus, practice accordingly. And again, only two or three CR question in total should be given three minutes. That's all. Prepare for traps. Not just question types, and GMAT uses nice traps to pin you down with a false sense of security. In fact, that's the beauty of GMAT. In all the sections, there are traps that are so brutal that the questions look very simple and the wrong answer options looks very convincing. So the first and foremost trick. To crack any CR question is to read carefully so that we won't fall for traps. There are different kind of traps that GMAT continuously uses in CR section. But if we want to summarize all the traps in short, it is just playing with words. That's all. The CR questions simply play with words, and thus we just need attention to details to track it down. Let's solve the next question. Please pause the video for two minutes and play when you're ready. Let's follow our process: read, conclude, pause, eliminate. Premise: The percentage arrested under intensive supervision is equal to the percentage arrested under routine supervision. Example: 
total people out on IS is equal to 100, arrested is equal to 20, so it is 20%. Total people out on RS is equal to 200, arrested 40, so it is again 20%. What's the conclusion? IS is no better than RS in preventing criminals from committing additional crime. The premise also suggests IS is no better than RS, but wait, in what? In percentage of criminals getting arrested? So what is this argument trying to say? Getting arrested is similar to committing crimes. The premise is all about getting arrested. The conclusion is all about committing crimes. I might commit a crime and still might not get arrested. Or, I might not have committed a crime and still might get arrested. So these two activities, committing crime and getting arrested, appear the same thing but are not actually. In this way, this CR question is playing with words. And believe me, if you have just spotted the playing with words in every CR question, you don't need to go through the power of elimination. Even though we suggest to apply the POE in all the questions, but it is always better to know what you're looking for. It has to be a combination of both. We should know what we are looking for and also what we are not looking for. So, we saw a glance of how the traps are set on the GMAT for CR and how smartly the words are used to trick us. We just need to be careful and pay close attention. We will further categorize the traps so that we can understand different class of traps. The answer to the previous question was option C. Hopefully you've done it right.